Get ready to raise the dead. On this edition, we're resurrecting hardware, a forgotten sci-fi horror revolving around a killer robot in a post-apocalyptic future. Made in 1990, it's supposedly set in the year 2000, where a scavenger uncovers the remains of an unusual droid in the radioactive wasteland surrounding a post-nuclear metropolis. He takes it to Scrapper Alvey, but it's intercepted by Dylan McDermott as ex-Marine Mo, who offers the guy a tidy sum for the scrap. Mo flips the robotic remains, but keeps the head as a gift for his girlfriend Jill. Played by Stacy Travis, Jill lives in a fortified apartment which shuts out the overpopulated and sometimes mutated city dwellers. There she does contract work while exploring abstract metal sculpture. Jill accepts Moe's gift and integrates the metallic skull as the focal piece for her latest design. The couple then gets down to carnal affairs while the skull shows signs of artificial life. Meanwhile, Alvi has been researching the body parts, which belong to a classified government prototype known as the Mark 13. Paraphrasing a verse out of chapter 13 from Mark's Gospel as no flesh shall be spared, its programming executes that sentiment as an aggressive form of population control. With its central processor back online, Mark 13 interfaces with the apartment's security system to recharge. It then remotes with its missing body parts that reactivate and home in on the source to rebuild. Mark 13's arsenal includes hypodermics filled with cytotoxin, buzzsaw blades, and rotating drills. It's apparently not designed to deliver clean or humane kills. Alvi calls in Mo to report the news, however when Mo arrives, he finds Alvi dead while a now operational Mark 13 tries to kill Jill. Link, her neighbor slash stalker, manages to sneak in before Mark 13 locks down the apartment, preventing escape. In between making passes at Jill, Link tries to unlock the outside door before Mark 13 removes him from the population count, with extreme prejudice. Jill repeatedly evades Mark 13, going as far as hiding in the fridge to trick its infrared vision. Her ingenuity provides Mo with enough time to return with reinforcements, who blast their way into the apartment, then blow Mark 13 out of the high-rise window. But, spoiler alert, it doesn't go offline. Mark 13 yanks Jill out the window, and she eventually crashes through plate glass a floor below. Mo then engages Mark 13, eventually falling victim to a kiss from its toxic fangs. A revived Jill fights her way back up to the apartment, mourns Mo, and hacks her way into Mark 13's brain, where she learns that the droid is susceptible to moisture. Thus, she lures it into a final confrontation in her shower stall, where she turns on the tap, causing Mark 13 to tap out. However, all is not well in this nightmarish world. A closing radio report announces job openings as the government plans to open a new factory, to produce Mark 13 units, of course. The feature debut for writer-director Richard Stanley, hardware was written off as a Terminator ripoff. However, despite less than stellar reviews, hardware made sufficient bank, prompting Stanley to pen a sequel script that failed to get off the ground. The film's guilty of playing like a violent fever dream with little character development or narrative arc. Its strength, however, lies in the arresting visuals and foreboding atmosphere driven by Simon Boswell's score. The soundtrack also features killer cuts by Public Image Limited, Iggy Pop, and Motorhead. Iggy and Motorhead's Lemmy are also featured in cameo roles. While the tagline indicates you can't stop progress, you can stop hardware, as it's apparently out of print. So grab a copy if you can find one, but don't turn others onto the film. We need to keep its cult fan base manageable, or else we'll have to adopt more extreme methods of population control. Like these films? Hit subscribe and turn on notifications for future episodes.